Uh. All right, and we're live. <laughs> Just <laughs> belch into your into your ear right there. <laughs> Dead Men's Stone Podcast well. co- co-host Becky. Guest tonight hey. is uh, let's see who do I have here, Mark, Mark. Slade. <laughs> we have Mark Slade. <laughs> That's me. He's the legendary Did child you know actor. He... Legendary, yeah. ch- legendary <laughs> child actor turned hardcore BDSM oh, even... guy. Oh, okay. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah, is I was that... on High Chaparral. Yeah. <laughs> so, is, is that so really you? the whips and chains won't work with no. him? Oh. What's that? Well, the whips so the whips and chains won't work with him, right? Nope, not at all. Chainsaws. Crap. Oh, chainsaws. Ah. Okay. That's right. Okay. Big Leatherface fan. So, <laughs> Me too. So I take it that you aren't the BDSM Mark Slade. Nope, I sure am not. Hmm, man, that's that's weird because but I, it uh, sure is fun sharing his name though. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, I bet so, and I'm glad you're not because I would have to wonder what in the world Hollywood did to you if you were. I mean, <laughs> Jesus. There is a Mark Slade out there that's both, I don't know if he's both, I don't even know if he's the same guy, a child actor and BDSM hardcore erotica well, writer. Apparently there's, an, uh, there's another one here in the city where I live at. I went to get my eyeglasses and uh, my eyes checked and uh, the woman had the wrong uh, portfolio for me. Oh man. She, there's oh. another Mark Slade out there. <sighs> that might be huh. the... I think it's him. I think he's the one that writes about slave girls from Moon. Ooh, yeah. And oh, those Lord. Books, those books sound interesting. Slave girls, pirate slaves, pirate booties. Um, um, just... What was... It was another one. It was something that was kind of crazy. What was it? It was uh, sex trafficking mm. for dummies or something. Oh, okay. A how-to guide. <laughs> Okay, so by the way, uh, the NSA and the FBI they do listen to this podcast ever since I did the conspiracy issue. So is that right? So we're just making oh, okay. sure you are not that Mark Slade that wrote sex nah. trafficking for dummies. Nope. Okay. Nope. All right, just making sure now. Just making sure. Now I have a, I have a few announcements. A, a few announcements real fast. Dead Men's Tome has finally released. Finally, Bikers versus the Undead. Yay! I know, right? It's been long overdue. Bikers that versus the awesome uh, too. Oh, it looks great. It looks great. Sick looking. Bikers versus the dead guys. Leather clad, cigar smoking, whiskey drinking, rough motherfuckers going against the walking rotters, bloated, bloated chandlers. Okay, they come up from the grave. They they run up the, the they cross paths with these guys. They're done for, right? Come on. Mm-hmm. It has everything that you would want in a in a zombie fiction. Just a lot of brain bashing, flesh eating, just badass stuff. Well, the book is out now. You can get the ebook on Amazon. Uh, paperback is on the way. Cool. So go check it out. Uh, okay. Now, now, if you want to get a free copy of this, a free signed copy, all you have to do is check out the Hollywood. Oh, no, Hollywood. I got Hollywood on the brain. Um, Halloween live stream this Halloween night this Halloween night there's gonna be a live stream might be a little bit later okay just trick-or-treating and all that shit but if you're there in the chat room ask for a signed copy you ask for a signed copy you're probably gonna get it because I know it's late on Wednesday in the middle of the week <laughs> so if you ask you're probably gonna get it but whoever asks I'm be put in a raffle randomly selected and you get a signed paperback copy we we'll also be handing out uh, merchandise, uh, giving away m- merchandise, like a hundred dollars worth of it, and also we're celebrating the release of a new book by Renee Miller called "Flesh and Blood," which yeah. I'm going to put that cover on the screen too. All right, "Flesh and Blood." I can only keep it there for a little I bit. I can't wait like to read that one too. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty titillating, and YouTube might uh, take me down for it. So let me go and take off, take off the image. All right. Now with all that plugging out of the way, um, Mr. Slade, do you have anything you want to plug real fast? Uh, well, let's see. What's coming up? Um, I'm in, uh, oh man, what did, um, shoot, I can't remember stuff. <laughs> um, 
Uh, you're going to have to help me out, Jesse. What am I in? Come you on, are you know in. It. You are in several things. I know you're in Krampus Christmas. Uh, you are. Well, also, yeah. Uh, Talk about Trump. Trumpocalypse. Uh, Trumpocalypse. Uh, you're also in Trumpocalypse. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see. Southern. Do you have Pride. an anthology you're working on? Yeah, I'm on. I'm working on an anthology. Um, basically, uh, making fun of religion. Um, well, cults and such. Uh, actually, Jesse, you're in this. Yeah. And uh, Becky, you're going to be in it, right? Yes, sir. All right. Yep, got a lot of people. I think Chris Roy is going to be in it. Uh, Yvonne Mason oh, awesome. is going to be in it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, E.S. Wynn. We, we got a lot of people. A lot of people are going to be in this book. Oh. Just waiting on uh, the rest of the stories and uh, Cameron Hampton to do the cover. Cool. All right, sounds exciting. Sounds pretty exciting. And uh, uh, is, there a, is there a date, expect, like an expected date for that? Uh... Well, no, because uh, then I'm going to have to work on either it's going to be self-published or uh, Becky will probably help me out with Hellbound books, mm. uh, yeah. you know. So, yep. Okay. All right. Well, let's, um, we'll, we'll stay connected about that. We'll see what happens with it. Uh, definitely, right. um, since I'm in it, um, and I know other people that are going to be in it, definitely be in the loop on that thing, so... Uh, definitely looking forward yeah. to that. Now, now we do have some. There's one thing I want to say before we really get started. Talk about everything Mark Slade. The last episode was a little bit depressing for me. We had a great guest on, but man, oh, yeah. Stanley, we we otter. I said his name right. We otter. Say it like a, like an animal. Yes, you we did. We otter. Okay. Yeah. It was depressing because it it kind of painted a perspective for me. Of like how the horror scene was for him when Stephen King and Jack Ketchum and cats like that were around. Uh, only the ones still around. Stephen King's still around, but you know what I'm saying. But versus now with the right. indie scene, it's not. It, it's like the. It almost seemed like the indie scene hasn't really made mainstream, and it's, it's kind of just thriving in its corner. It's, yeah. So, I mean, I messaged you this morning and was like, man, are we just turning turning our wheels, spinning our wheels in the mud over here? Is that what we're doing, Becky? Nope. Are you sure? No, I don't think so at all. Yeah. I mean, there are quite a few um, indie authors that, you know, have, have gotten to the point where they can do this, you know, for a living as their, as their job. I think it, you know... It's a lot of work, and a lot of authors don't understand that, or, you know, it's just, well, I, I put out a book, I've got a book, you know, and, and that's the end of it. They think that, you know, they have unrealistic goals as yeah. far as what should happen. I agree. You know? I agree. Yeah. They, why, they don't realize you, that. Why would you want that? Uh, you would want the reality of having a job, a family to keep you rooted, you know? Right. You don't want to be stuck in a room, hitting at a typewriter or a computer for eight hours a day, uh, sometimes 14, and then that's your life. That's it. Right. I mean, why would you want that? You, you, your ideas would dry up. You need that connection with the real world. And ha having a job, a real job, I think it helps. You know, uh, getting successful can be probably uh, really bad for a lot of people as we read about it. Right. I think that, you know, they don't realize, too, that, you know, that like Stanley said, you know, the real work comes after the book is published. Yeah. And that's, you know, getting it out there. And, you know, there's there's so many things you can do, so many um, ways to promote your book and you know and, and I just see people not doing any of them and, and well, then, they would, complain, then they complain because you know I've only sold three copies well you know I can tell you why well you know the, one of the things too is um, you would think with internet it will be easier to sell what you want 
but it's not. You know, it's oversaturated. There's a lot of people out there doing the same thing. That's very true. And you have to have um, a product or a way to get their attention, you know, um, to where your stuff um, shines above everybody else's. And, and, yeah, you're right. That is hard to do. And you, if you um, have a, a niche or a corner market like bondage books, you could sell well. Yeah, exactly. And, you know... <sighs> It's. It, I have compared a couple of uh, indie authors that I know to used car salesmen, and, yeah. and I don't mean that in a bad way at all. What I mean is, is that you know, it's not that they're selling their books; they sell themselves to people. Mm. You know, that's how they got their following. Um, you know, everybody loves so-and-so you know it, it's not that you know they love his writing it's that they they love him so therefore you know when he has a book out they all buy it yeah whether okay. it's good or not and and i know a couple that aren't but they sell like yeah. nobody's business it so it just drives me crazy give me um uh, give me a few names of some uh success stories in the indie indie realm Matt Shaw. Um, Matt Shaw, yeah. He sells, okay. I mean, he's got over 100 books out, and, and he sells books like crazy. Um, Michael Bray, um, Ian Robright, uh, Ray Garden. Ray Garden, yeah. Uh, Jeff Strand. Yeah. Jeff Strand. That's right, and he's, um, he even self-publishes, too. Yes, he does. Um, Brian Lumbly. Um, Graham Masterson. I mean, you know, the list goes on and on. I mean, it is possible. You know, you have to... I think there's a process of, of how you do things and how you, you grow your audience. And, 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 and by no means do I know everything, but I know that you have to be marketing to your target audience. Yeah. And most of the time, yeah. as indie authors, they are marketing to other authors. That does not work. No, no, not really. No. It, you know, and a few of these people we had on the show, and it's almost like I could have just mm -hmm. listened to my own podcast and <laughs> reminded myself, you know what? There are success stories, and we talked to them. There are. Here. But, um, yeah, I mean, every now and then it's good to. Uh, it's good look around you and look at you know those are doing well uh, those that are well of course it's not easy for them they're working at it right i mean they're putting an overtime in this so it's it's not like they're getting it's not a cakewalk or anything no you're right it's work uh, so what do you think about you have any take on that mark uh uh, what do you mean, like uh, promoting yourself and yeah. everything? Yeah. Well, for some, I, you know, for me especially, it's kind of hard because you know I don't want to come across as being, um, uh, you know, um, just put myself out there too much, and uh, you know, I always think that people are, you know, they're they're tired of hearing or seeing my posts and things like that. I always think of that, and that that stops me from. You know, talking about it, you know, um, appearing on these shows and not remember what I'm in, that can hurt, yeah. <laughs> that can hurt you, <laughs> you know, but, you know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't, forget. I don't always do this. I don't always do this for the money. I mean, because if I did, I, you know, I would have already committed suicide if <laughs> that was what I was in it for. Right. So, you know, once yeah. in a while I get paid and that's good. And, but, you know, mostly it's just seeing your work in print. Mm, okay. That's that's what motivates me. It's for the love of doing it. Yeah. It is. Right. And okay. It's the same thing. It's the same thing doing a uh, audio drama or a podcast. You yeah. do it because you like it. Right. All right. We're, we're going to dig into the, all that too, especially your podcast. Um, yeah, but this definitely helps build perspective. Um, you know, like I said, I was feeling kind of down about this earlier, but now I'm actually feeling a little bit better. So much so that I think I should start drinking. 
Uh, I want to do a uh, <laughs> drinking game tonight, and uh, I think uh, what it is is uh, every time Mark Slade says the word dick, now he has to say it in a sentence, and he can't just repeat oh, yeah? the same <laughs> sentence over and over again. So, well, Jesse, why are you such a dick? <clears throat> and I have to take a shot of uh, of whiskey over here, so so I'll go and take a shot now since I'm such a dick over here. Yeah, Dick Nixon is my favorite president. Oh, okay. I even had the first one. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna die. Uh, Mark, are you ready to do the podcast? Just me and you? Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, Justin's gonna be laying on the floor. <laughs> uh, I have a feeling that he can handle it. I think he probably uh, can too. Yeah. I mean, mm. he probably wakes up and takes a drink. So. Oh. <laughs> Just so he can roll out of bed. Yeah, my, my oh. body depends on it now. I get the DTs Jumper. if I don't. Yeah. Hey, uh, speaking, you know, we got some news and stuff to cover, right? We got some. Oh, yeah. We do. Oh, shit. I might need to have a shot for this. So what happened, Becky? Yeah. Well, um, today at a Kroger um, near me, and that's a grocery store for people that don't realize what a Kroger is, um, an armed guy went in and shot and killed someone in the store. Then he walked out, had a gunfire with, a, with an armed citizen, and there was an elderly lady that got caught in the crossfire and killed. And then the guy left, the suspect left, but they did catch him. Um, right now, they don't know why he did it. Um, it seems to be very random. Um, the guy made some um, nasty remarks about um, people... Um, what kind of remarks? Another, what kind of remarks? Well, he he said, well, he told the guy, the citizen, he said, don't shoot at me and I won't shoot at you. And he said, white people don't shoot white people. Oh, okay. So, wait. <laughs> do, we, like, do we know anything about the victims in the store? Or, like, if they were... Uh, we, we we do not right oh, now. Okay. No. That's in- interesting. Okay. I mean, that's fucked but up. But it though. does say that both... Both people seem to be uh, random victims. Of course, we know the lady outside was. I mean, she got caught in a crossfire. But mm-hmm. um, why he walked in, you know. And this is a really nice section of town. I mean, this is, you know, this is the fleecy end of town. I mean, it's not like maybe maybe the guy was uh, bars on the window the guy was definitely off his meds and off his fucking rocker man the guy was that guy was crazy uh, just You'd from the have mugshot to alone to go in somewhere and shoot people yeah like that fuck just raging raging that day just just winners are shooting you know fuck and um and I, I look at that story as someone who I mean, you know my family owns guns you know guns are a part of my life yeah, and it's too. like I was like, okay. And then even in that story, you have uh, this news article. It's almost like it it, it writes itself. It writes the example of what could mm-hmm. go wrong even when a civilian tries to engage with, with another dude with a gun. Uh, an elderly woman, someone's grandmother, someone's great-grandmother died in that exchange. The, the I mean, saddest thing I saw... On a um, on a video that they showed was um, a guy was there talking to the police, trying to find out if the lady that got shot and killed was his mother. Oh shit! That yeah. oh man, that's it hard. really it really Ooh. killed me. I mean, of course, you know th- this is a news event for this community because it doesn't happen a lot. Let's say someplace in Detroit right. or Chicago or probably some other areas over there in, in Kentucky where it's like a daily occurrence, you know, shootings at the regular. Yeah, know? this made CNN. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just crazy, you know. Yeah, of course, what's going to happen is the usual dialogue afterwards. Oh, gun control. Don't take my guns. Mental illness. Okay, we're, uh, people will be arguing on Twitter, on Facebook, 
but no no real discussion is going to be had. You know, it's just be a bunch of arguing or uh, just name calling, labeling, and just shutting down. But it's like, what what can you do? You know, like it's not like you have a magic wand where you're going to get rid of all the mental illness or all the psychos or all the guns or anything. We, we make and sell guns in this country. <laughs> I mean, our politicians right. are in bed with, you know, with gun companies. I mean, it's like, I don't know, for me, as someone, like I said, other than guns, it's like, I mean, that's why I, that's why I have one on me. So that way, right? you know, I gotta try to be safe. But, but it's crazy, though, because I... I I don't know. What what do y'all think? I, I, it just kills me. I I don't know. And they, you know, the other thing they said was that uh, people inside the store heard gunshots. Then they oh, stopped, man. and then they heard more gunshots, which to me says probably, and this is just a guess, that he emptied a clip and reloaded and shot again. Yeah, well, well he, but he apparently had really, thought really, about this for a long time. He had it planned, you know. Yeah, and so I'm, you know, I'm waiting to see, you know, what else they come out with with this. Of course, there, I doubt there'll be anything else tonight. But I bet at six o'clock in the morning there'll be stuff on. But um, yeah, because right now they're saying, you know, that it was totally random, and, and I don't buy that at all. This guy didn't go in the Kroger to start shooting at people. He shot someone. Yeah. One guy. Oh yeah, I bet you there there was a dispute between those two. There was a reason why he shot that one guy. That was a target. Yeah, yeah. That was a target right there. Um, I just don't buy that, you know, because they said it does appear that he was, it was random. No. I'm not that dumb. Man, this is hard. I, you know what? I think for that, I'll have a shot. I'll have a shot just for that. Uh, and just to remind people that are that are watching, the drinking game now is every time Mark Slade says dick. But you know what? I'm going to give it to the chat, too. Hey, if you're yeah. watching right now in the chat room, say Mr. Dead Man is a dick, and I'll take a shot. <laughs> now, I'm not going to do it every time you say it. The trick is you have to share Me? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm saying that for the chat. Share... Get other people on this. Get them in the chat room and say, Mr. Deadman is a dick. And every time that I do, I'll take a shot. <coughs> we'll see, we'll see if, I, if I survive the night. <laughs> anyway, here's another shot. <laughs> what are you drinking tonight? Uh, $10 whiskey. <laughs> Ew! $10, oh. huh? spent a whole yeah. $10 on it. He's a, oh, man. a pricey, <sighs> pricey one tonight, I'm telling you. Did you see that meme that I sent you? The thing about um, urine? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, about <laughs> a, a diabetic's blood. So sugary? No, no, urine, urine. Oh shit! Their okay, urine I... contains so much sugar that it can be purified and made into high-end single malt whiskey. No, no way, no fucking that's way. That's what it says. Oh, that's so... <laughs> shit. That might be what this. <laughs> that's that, gross. Might, that might be what that moonshine was. Hell, that might be what this fucking ten-dollar <laughs> whiskey is. It's pretty gross. <laughs> <laughs> it's um. Well, I was gonna say I'm diabetic and and I know you'd take one for the team, but I'm not saving my pee. It's uh, in it. Uh, yeah. Gross. <laughs> oh. No, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey. In lighter news, I got this. Check this out. I know we're talking about guns and all that. That's depressing. And psychos. Yes. But um. Did Did you know that uh China wants a China wants to release a Death Star. Yeah. What? They want to launch a fake a fake moon. Are you shitting me? No, nah, no, nah, I'm not shitting you. They want to launch a fake a fake moon. Like I'm not even saying it right. It doesn't sound <laughs> right. A fake moon. This sounds like a Why? plot. This sounds like a like a, a Simpsons plot or like 
Mr. Burns <laughs> just wants to put up a moon just for having a moon up there. So are, are they sending their own people up there? Or are they going <laughs> to film their own people going to the moon? Which is it? <laughs> Maybe yeah. that's the thing. Maybe they have their the own thing. Chinese version of Stanley Kubrick, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what's going on here. Because they know they can't... What? They can't send anybody they? to the moon. They can't. They can't do what we did. They can't fake a moon landing or make it look like it's real. Maybe it was a real. Maybe it was real. So they're, what they're going to do is make their own moon. We got Jilla on the moon. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna make their own <laughs> fucking moon, man. They put up their. But this is real. This is real. I'm not bullshitting you. In 2020. Why are they doing this? First of all, they call it an an illumination station. Uh-huh. And a illumination station. It's to illuminate uh, the night sky so that way they don't need street lights. It's to help them save money, they oh. say. Whoa. This is the dumbest thing I have ever heard in my life. Oh, yeah, it's pretty freaking stupid. Do they not know what a solar panel is? Uh, you would think, right? You would think. You know, for goddamn sure they do. I mean... Come on now. Well, and not only that, but you know, if they're going to light up the night sky, what about all the, the plants and critters and stuff that depend on the darkness? They're just going to, the hell with them. It's sunny 24 <laughs> 7. <laughs> <laughs> that would kill all the goths, um, man. Yeah, like, no. it's sunny 24 7. The oh, night light. Oh, I die. see what they're doing. They're, they're trying to keep their own vampires <laughs> from coming out. Is that what it is? That's what it is. <laughs> You're on it. Okay, I hear an anthology idea here. Oh, man, <laughs> Mr. Slade's on it. I think that that's it. I thought it was uh-huh. they're going to like say it's a fake moon to start a death beam and aim it on the, on the states. But no. <laughs> this is it. They have a vampire problem. After all, wait. That's what it is. Didn't Blade 3 <laughs> take place in China? Oh, I'm thinking about the, I'm thinking about the blade the blade that never came out. No wait. I think if we go on uh I think we go on the deep web you can Maybe find it was some, Beetlejuice. It might be. It might be the unreleased Beetlejuice movie. Some uh, vampires <laughs> over there in China. Okay. <laughs> Shit. That's crazy though. That's fucking weird. Or Godzilla. Maybe it's just Godzilla. Oh, oh man, I think you have maybe. the wrong region there. You have the wrong oh, region. Oh, yeah, I guess I do, Donna. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're thinking Japan. Well, potato, potato. Hey, if Japan did it, if J- if Japan was doing it, I, I probably wouldn't really have any. Did- but, yeah, you go ahead and do it. You go ahead and do it. Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? Revenge? <laughs> oh, oh, they're going to send... Kim Jong Young or whatever his name is. Oh to shit! To the moon, North Korea. Oh man, they probably will. Yeah. Oh fuck. They're gonna kidnap <sighs> him and send him to the moon. It, it, you know it's the next thing. New prison. You know, like so, Trump is talking about space force, and China's talking about fake moons. He's like, are, oh, are we no. really gonna have like a space war? I mean, is our future really gonna be a firefly? Y- y- y'all seen the show Firefly, right? Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. Okay, you know how like they always had like the Chinese writing and stuff? It was kind of like... Mm-hmm. Bi- okay. So, obviously, like, two major powers, China and the States, they uh, joined forces somehow. They somehow managed to make it. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be Chinese technology. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. fuck. Okay. No. <laughs> no. Now that we talked about that silliness, Mark Slade, let's really dive. Yeah, let's really nose dive into what you've been doing lately, man. Because uh, okay. last time you were on the show, we were talking about your store in Krampus Christmas. But a uh, you know, time right. has passed. So what are you doing sure. now? What's going on? Uh, well, I've got a audio drama uh, that uh, airs on Para X Radio. It's uh, called Blood Noir, and uh, deals with crime and horror stories, if you couldn't guess from the name. And uh, mm-hmm. we've uh, already aired, I think, 29 episodes, 28 episodes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. 
Yeah, and you can also catch it on Anchor. Anchor FM, which is the uh, platform where all the uh, reruns go. Also, Chris Roy, he uh, has an internet show called uh, um, The Noor Connection, and he uh, replays the episodes, too. He just started today. Oh, cool. Yep. Oh, that is pretty damn cool. It, hey, uh, some, of the, some, some of the books that I've uh, appear in, uh, I just had to go to my page to look at it. That's crazy, I know. But uh, Southern Fried Autopsies uh, is one. Uh, it'll be out uh, October 31st. And uh, this is pretty cool. I, I got to get into this. Um, it's, uh, dang on, where is it? <laughs> Switchblade. I'm in uh, the anthology magazine Switchblade, uh, issue oh, seven. Yeah. I think that comes out this week also. Mm. So. Cool. Okay. That's pretty cool. You've yeah, been, just... been busy. And um, also, um, uh, out there, and uh, Chris Roy works for these guys too. It's uh, close to the bone, uh, mm-hmm. and I, they've accepted a book for me. Um, it's uh, Witch for Hire, which is my detective book. Of course, you know she's a witch, but she's also a private detective. And uh, they've accepted that. Hopefully, I'll cool. get that series going. And I have another series, uh, Barry London, which is uh, basically he's a, ah, you know, he's he's like a, um, he's he's a fixer for the mob. But I mean, he does so much more. And uh, usually, he gets caught up in things. And uh, I have a book I sent to them as well. Hopefully, we'll get that series going. And uh, you know, this book. Uh, deals with uh, police corruption. Mm, okay. Oh wow. Well I think uh let's let's dive right into your into your podcast, The Blood okay. War. Yeah, so, Blood and War. So remind me, like like how long have you been starting been working on this? Uh this particular one I think it's it's been about a year, year and a half, you know, as far as getting the uh, scripts and uh getting actors together, uh, uh, putting it together. At one point, at one point I had about, uh, 14 episodes already put together and I was going to only release them once a month, which that would have taken me a whole year to release. But, uh, stupid me, I decided to release, uh, two of them together. And so I ended up to where I didn't have anything and I would go to my friends like, uh, Pete Lutz, uh, he he volunteered some episodes to me from his show, uh, and uh, so I've been rerunning some of his um, and things like that. And that that's so. And you write the scripts yourself, or do you get help from other people? Uh, right now, I get help from other people. Um, I I was writing all the scripts. You know, I, I had a lot of ideas. They, they were coming really fast, and uh, the scripts were coming uh, pretty fast. Um, casting isn't always that fast, uh, and editing all the voices together with sound effects and music is even slower than that. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's definitely a process. It's 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 not too far off from uh, what filmmakers go through. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that stuff could be very. That's really cool. I have to listen yeah. to that. I but I love it. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, unless you're easily offended, then you probably shouldn't. And uh, <laughs> Shit. So it's a lot of nasty stories in there. <laughs> easily offended? What? What's the most offensive thing? In uh, yeah. What's the most offensive thing? Uh, let's see. Was it episode seventeen? is uh, about a guy who just got out of jail and he's never been laid. And so his friend tries to hook him up and takes him to it. Well, no, he doesn't take him. He finds a card in a restaurant uh, that's a sex club. Uh-huh. So there you go. Uh-oh. So. <laughs> oh, no, no. You never I, don't put... think, I don't think it's possible to offend me. Uh, but you don't, you don't take a neat, uh, you don't take someone who's never been laid into a sex club. They're not. They're not gonna know what to do. Well, they're not gonna. It know doesn't what to do. end well. It doesn't end well for him. I bet I can not. Tell you that. I bet not. No, it doesn't. 
Uh, <laughs> it's like, you know, when you take someone for the first time to a strip club, it's embarrassing, you know, how far they go, Some, especially if they're like a virgin, if they never, if that's like their first experience with a woman, <laughs> it's like, uh, and all they've been doing was watching porn the whole, whole time or whatever, so they they think <laughs> one way. I'm like, no, no, it's it's not it's not like what you think. Come on now, right? Come on, you gotta you gotta connect with them. You gotta connect with them. Otherwise, otherwise they're not gonna come back. And they'll kick <laughs> you out of the place, motherfucker. Come on. <laughs> Had to have that conversation. Has that happened once. to you? No, oh, no. Pff, have not. you been kicked out? <laughs> no, I haven't been kicked out. <laughs> But, uh, I can't. I've never been, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, I would like to exaggerate for the show, but I've only been like three times, so. <laughs> so you're exaggerating there? Well, it actually, yeah. that, that that's the exact number, three times. <laughs> oh. <okay. laughs> uh, once for, uh, I think twice, no. Twice for a bachelor party? Yeah. And then once because my boss said, roll the phone's over, we're going to a strip club. I'm like, oh, fuck. So my uh, wife, my wife was blowing. So you had a f- business meeting in, in the strip club. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And my wife was uh-huh. blowing my phone about that. I don't even know why I told her. I think it's just because I just wanted to be like, man, my boss told me to do this, so I'm going to be doing it. <laughs> she, she was happy about that. <laughs> oh man. So I told you I had a good time. Oh, it was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. <laughs> I so, mean, you know, you know where home is. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, on the Blood and Your project, I mean, getting the getting the casting and all that. Like, what was that like? Well, yeah, I know. When I first started doing this, actually, um, man, years and years ago, about five or six years ago, I knew nobody who did this, and I would I would ask people and. Even the ones who had already been doing audio drama for a long time would not even help me. They wouldn't even accept an idea for a script. So I just put that on a back burner. And uh, I met a couple guys, uh, the 4077th production company. And I started talking to them and I asked them, well, if I wrote one, would you produce it? And Mm -hmm. they said, yes. I mean, it was that easy. And I go, oh, okay. So... I started doing that, and Victor Aurelius is the uh, main guy behind it, and he helped me with that. He, he, I even corrected a lot of my scripts, and I looked at his, but he produced them. He, he actually produced uh, quite a few of the stories that I, I wrote for him, and then I, he would send me the voices. You know, hey, I got this person to play, you know, so and so, and I would listen to it, and I got fascinated by it. And then I asked him, well, how do you put this together? And he he didn't tell me exactly how. He just said, well, you know, just go ahead and get started on it and try and see if you can do it. And uh, I did, and I sent him one, and he says, well, the only bad thing about it is when you do the dialogue, it takes too long for the other person to get back to you. So it's got to be a rhythm to it, you know, just Mm. like the way we talk, you know. And, And he also suggested to have people interrupt each other because that's more realistic. Oh yeah. But don't, is. don't just like this. But don't do the ro- Yes. <laughs> don't don't do the Robert Altman thing where everybody talks at the same time because no one will understand. Um it it, it, it was a process. It was a lot to do. Uh, he introduced me to a lot of actors and he acted too in, in my stuff. And uh, through him I met Pete Lutz who always gets me actors. Pete Pete's the best. Seriously. Uh, not only that, he, he's he's really good uh, director and editor. And uh, his Potpourri show is, is one of the best uh, audio dramas you can listen to. Potpourri. I mean, he does a wide range of stories. So, Yeah, I wanted That's to even so cool. ask, like, where do you go to post? Uh, a book for, like, where do you post your open call for, for voice actors? Cause they I they use... actually have... They have them. They have uh, they have the Facebook um, rooms oh. for them. Uh, also, there's people who post. They have websites for their own voices, and so, sometimes you'll land a person who's done commercials. Okay, you know? so oh wow, would it be safe to use but, Craigslist? Ah, uh, no, it's <laughs> never safe to use Craigslist unless you're looking for a, a daytime hooker. 
Uh, yeah, I wouldn't think that was safe either, though. Yeah. Well, in, in the <laughs> not, future not China, the future China at nighttime, hookers are going to be daytime hookers. Look at that. Yes. They get that, <laughs> yes, that fake are. moon out there. Man. <laughs> But no, I, I had some voice work done for uh, Dead Man's Tome. I had had a few people read stories. I didn't know where to post it, so I did go to Craigslist. Right. And, oh, uh, did you? That was oh my inter- god! Interesting <laughs> stuff. Interesting yeah. stuff. But did uh, did Charlie Manson a- answer? <laughs> probably. <laughs> he probably did. You know, uh, I could nobody's pro- twelve hookers did. <laughs> I could probably claim that I spoke with a member of uh, the Manson family, and not been lying oh. about it. But uh, no, I had voice work done for a few stories, and then I was okay. like, "Man, but that process was too complicated and long." Cause it's tedious. Craigslist. It's tedious. Like, who uses that anymore? <laughs> you did know? you did you edit it too? Yeah. Well, I, in that tedious. <laughs> well. Actually, for for those, they were just kind of straightforward, just audio pieces. I didn't really put any. No, I didn't put any special effect or sound effects. So I just, oh, just it was just right. a reading. It was just a reading, and the reading sounded right. All right, so I didn't really have to do any extra work. So it was good. Oh, no. oh okay. Because sometimes even with that, you get different takes, uh, and and it's actually kind of funny when they mess up <laughs> reading it. I, I sent this one lady a story to read, and. Uh, and she was reading it, and right when she got to the last part she had to read, she goes, oh, my God, no, she did not do oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what did she yeah. do? That what? would be me. Well, it was about a rock star uh, and this groupie, and she goes backstage, and yeah. Yeah. And Something fell off in her mouth. <gasps> oh. And then she uh. kept it. As I keep saying, that's oh. what she was talking about. Oh my! Huh. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. She took it home to play with for uh, you know for a little bit longer. Well, you Souvenir. know she was a big she fan. Put on the mantle. Yeah. She was a big fan. That's why she kept it. Yeah. But, I'm a big uh, fan. She, she yeah. just did the uh, Arena Bobbit thing and then just <laughs> just took it, just took it. <laughs> Hey, mm-hmm. Becky, let's see if we can get some people on, on Facebook to come into the chat. Because I'm if they trying. call Mr. Deadman a dick in the chat, I'll take a shot. <laughs> I know it's a Wednesday night. Hey, Jesse. Hey, Jesse. Dick Vermeil. Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shot cam is on. All right. So yeah, any sort of have you received any feedback on your podcast? Uh, here and there, yeah. You know, um, it's the same thing with the indie Arthur. You know, writing books, you're kind of posting it, and uh, you don't always get people who don't do uh, audio uh, to listen. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Some people go, well, why would I listen to? an audio play when I can watch TV. I can see the movements. Mm. You know, you get that song. Some, you get, you know, hey, that was actually pretty good. And, you know, and, and that was one of the things I had to remember when I was writing scripts when I first started was that you're you're writing for the ear. You're not writing for the eyes. You know, so if you have to describe something that's happening, the action you either have to have it happen or you have a narrator. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, the, a character has to narrate it. <clears throat> Similar to like Coen Brothers movies, you know. Yeah. They always have some sort of narration going on. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, even some of the stories that were selected for, I used to do this podcast, it's been a while, called Dead, Dead Man's Tone Story Time, where. I or a few other people would volunteer. I know uh, Bob McNeil. He he did a few readings on his stories, where I I just pretty much read it, read the story. But it was just right. like it was me reading the story. But I was like, I can't read all these stories because not all of them really do well. Just reading it out because it's like too much too much description, or maybe it's just better if you just read it and not if I just say it to you. 
Um, right. So, but I mean, you're actually writing scripts. I mean, you're putting that into account. Like you're writing these things, these pieces to be read. Yes. It's like dialogue. Yeah. Yes. But, you know, I also I've found out some people do write their scripts as if they're writing movie scripts. So they will go into great detail about the characters, their movements, even though that doesn't um, get into the audio for the listeners. But it seems to help out the actors. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, th- th- that could definitely help. That could definitely help out. I mean, uh, if you don't know what to do, if the person just says, uh, you sound like you have a dirty voice. Do the dirty voice thing. Oh, okay. You want me to be like you want me to be pervy the whole time because uh, I could try that. I mean, what do you want me to do? You know. Well, I, you do get those kinds of questions. You know, uh, I've even had some scripts uh, where actors have rejected. They're like, "Nah, I can't do this. Oh. You know, it's too gra- It's too graphic, or I can't say that word. Can I change that word? You know, <laughs> things like that. And usually, I'll, I'll say, "Yeah, that's oh, fine." Yeah. If you, if you ad lib, that's fine. If you can make a better line of, of dialogue, but you know, sometimes also I've heard where they are supposed to do their better line of dialogue, and it's it's not even close. Mm. But you know, there's 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 actors like Tanya Malajevic is a really great actress. She she hits hits it every time. You know, um, Luthar Tuppen, he's another one, and like I said, Pete Lutz. They they always they always. Uh, Come through for me. They're they're really good actors, yeah, and and fearless too. Because Tanya will never say, "Oh, I can't do that." She'll go, "Oh, okay, that's no problem." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, no and matter not, what the script is, and not to expose too much, but I mean, are these these actors and actresses are they doing this for the love, or are they they getting some some green from this? Or uh, so, uh, quite a few of them can get some green from it. Uh, I've had a lot of them ask me for money if they, if I want them to act for me, but there's also, most of them just do it for the love. Okay. You know, they, they, they want to do this. Uh, and, and a lot of them are stage actors too. Man, I'm, I'm surprised. Like I checked out a few of the episodes and they're, they're pretty good quality. You, you put on a really good production. I appreciate that, but oh, and uh, uh, there, I've had sound problems too. Uh, I had to change the chat to live chat because YouTube was censoring out the dick. Uh, Mister Deadman is a dick from the new Panic Room Radio Show. Oh, that's hilarious! That's hilarious. Okay, <laughs> I'll go and take a shot for that. <laughs> but that that person who may or may not be uh, who I think she is needs to get someone else in here. Come on. <laughs> I don't know how that happened either. I, know, I bet you don't. I bet you're Mm-mm. all innocent about that. I am. I am. Mm-hmm. You don't believe me? <laughs> have you have you seen your avatar on the show? It's it's it looks evil. <laughs> I mean, who's I, this? Uh, oh, she's uh, cute. You probably can't see it right now, Mark Slade, but on the on. You know, this broadcast on on YouTube and on the on the screen, I'm represented by oh. this zombie with a cigar, the skull guy thing. She's like this cute little skull with a with a bow or something, flower. But it's it's like, a flower. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> shot cams on. Let me take the shot, man. Hey, uh, you're you're a Houston uh, fan, right? Uh, Aren't you a Texans? Oh, no, Texans? Texans? Yeah. Kind of, yeah, yeah. J.J. Watt is a dick. <laughs> oh, J.J. Watt's a dick. <laughs> yeah, really, man. Well, Y'all he... beat Dallas a couple weeks ago. I was he... kind of mad. <laughs> well, good, finally. I mean, I haven't really been Always following. Always beat Dallas. Well, J.J. JJ pretty much carries a team. Eh, I don't know. They've got a good team. It's not bad. I mean, beat us nineteen to sixteen. So uh, they had ups and downs, ups and downs, man. It's like the same problem though with a quarterback. It's always with the quarterback. Everyone's all shit on the quarterback. We can't get yeah, a good fucking true. quarterback. It's like they keep. 
you see, you watch the Texans game. It's like, how did you? How did the receiver? How did you not catch that? Like, what, what happened there? Even even I don't really watch football that that much, and I'm just like, how did that fuck up? Like that should have just worked. That looked like it, it worked in your test runs all the time. But man, it's like <laughs> it's like they can't handle pressure. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Ooh. Where were we at, Becky? Oh, we're talking about this podcast. <laughs> Let's talk about. You want to talk about yeah. uh, deep fried, deep, deep fried Southern autopsy horror? What, what was it? <laughs> Southern fried autopsy. Southern fried I love autopsies. That title. Yeah, that's good. That's um, man, I, I'm not sure who that's coming out by. I have to look at all. Hello. Oh, I'm still here. Oh, okay. I thought it went off. No, no, no. No. We're quiet. We're listening. Ah. Okay. <laughs> it's the only time we'll ever be quiet, so, you know. <laughs> All right, yeah. yeah. So talk to us about uh, Southern Fried Horror. Or, sorry, Southern Fried Southern Autopsies. Fried. Jesus. It's just, it was Vanthology. I think it's uh, for, um, I think it's uh, where uh, all the money goes to a charity. Um can't remember which one. Uh, <laughs> that's why I'm looking it up now. Okay. But, uh, okay. And you have a story in, in the anthology, right? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. All right. What's the title of that story? Oh, uh, let's see. The title of that story? Well, I do know it's about the Carters. Uh, actually, Alvin Carter, um, who was... Uh, in the 1920s and 30s, he was part of the Carter family band, and he went around looking for songs so that he could, um, for his band to do and record. And uh, I have it where he goes into this valley that had just been uh, traumatized by this terrible storm. And, I mean, everybody in it is is uh, basically homeless. And... Uh, that's that's where it starts with that. So I, I I can't really say too much more about the story because it'll give away the plot. Is there a dark secret to the Carter family? Ah, uh, maybe. We can't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to maybe. kill you if we tell you. Oh, just give me a little tease. Give me a little. <laughs> no. Give me a little flash. Come on. That's all right. Nah, I'll, I'll yeah, give you a dollar. You, you'll have to buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> if you buy the book, you can find out. There you go. Uh, what about the listeners? The, and if anyone listens yeah. to this, be like, they can oh. buy the book. They can buy the book. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, is this the one that's put out by um, L. Bachman? Yes, it is. Thank you. You're welcome. That's right. That's them. Yep. That's the book. And uh, cool. I'm this glad they... Horror Writers and Dark Poets. Yep. That's what it says. Cool. That's pretty cool stuff. Man. All right. And what about the uh, the Witch for Hire? Let's oh. Talk, talk about that one. Witch for Hire? Mm-hmm. Uh, Evelina Giles is a uh, witch and um, you know she uh, has a little shop in in the uh, college area of uh, this uh, Virginia town and uh, she sells spells and uh, this guy comes in and wants to buy a spell and uh, he wants to use it on his boss so that he can uh, get his boss's company and um, and his wife and she obliges him. Mm. The only problem is uh, her spells are stolen by somebody, and someone else starts using her spells against, you know, starts casting the spells, and things go wrong. So that's where that goes. Uh-oh. There's so, also gypsies involved. So Oh, you can't trust the gypsies. Um, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't oh, know. shit. Hold on. I might want to back that statement up. 
Mr. Yeah. Dead, I'm gonna be in trouble gonna be for that in one. World of shit. Yeah. <laughs> be like, oh no, Mr. Deadman's an ableist, and he's also they will probably say like races or some other gypsies or whatever shit. But <laughs> I'm just saying, you go to Europe and your wallet gets stolen. Shit it happens all the fucking time. Pipok, pip. Yeah. It's always yeah, the gypsies. It happens. Oh, happens, Lord. But, you know. What am just, I gonna do with you? Just ask anyone who. Just ask any Brit. Just ask. Just ask any Brit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'll ask Craig. I'll ask Craig yeah. over at uh, <laughs> over at close to the bone. We'll see what he says. Yeah, it's like I, I watched. Um, shit, what was it? Mark, that anthology is available for pre-order and. Um, I shared the um, the post for that and tagged okay. you in it, just so you All know. Right. Thank you, appreciate yeah. that. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, I got pre- yeah. I got to pre-order a copy. That way, I get a taste of that story. Absolutely. Because I'm yeah. still curious about the Carter family, man. I'm still I'm like, man, what, <laughs> what do they do? He's not telling you. Don't even ask again. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even giving me a nibble. I at least no. get a nibble. No. Come on. Okay. Don't okay. be a dick, Jesse. I'm not gonna be a. Oh. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. You said the word dick. Well, let me turn on the shot cam and uh, take a shot of whiskey real fast. All right. Okay. You walked right so into let, that. So one. let me get this straight. So this per, this witch is for hire, uh-huh. and anyone can walk up to her, and this guy he like wants to put like a curse on his boss. And his boss's wife? Uh, right? Something like that. It, it, it basically, I mean, it, of course it's not a straight story like that. It's more turns and twists than that, you know? Yeah, um, I don't think so. I mean, if it was a straight story like that, I don't, I don't think they would have uh, wanted to publish it. <laughs> no, no. So, but, but, I mean, does the, does the witch have ethics? Uh, yes, just not many of them, just not many ethics, but, you know, it's, uh, it, what she does is that she has this tea that she makes, and, uh, her and her, uh, her, uh, friend that helps her, and, um, she has her client drink the tea, and she can tell if they're lying about something, when their face glows. So. Oh, that, wow. That's, that's definitely a part of the story. But, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's where I was trying to marry horror and crime together. Um, there's, there's a lot of murders throughout the book. I mean, it's gotta be dead bodies. So. Of course, you gotta have a body count. It's not gonna be horror right. and crime without a body count. And by the way, right. This ten dollar whiskey, my breath, it smells like vomit already. <laughs> and I haven't even vomited ah. in this fucking mask. And yeah, and I am wearing a mask. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, I'm trying to hide my identity now. Look at that. Too late. <laughs> I feel I feel pretty good. You better though. take it off for you puke for real. No, but if you want to see me puke, say uh, Mr. Dead no. Man is a dick in the chat. And I'll take a hey, shot of uh. whiskey. And Jesse, did you know Dick Van Dyke was a Dick Tracy? <laughs> uh, son of a bitch. Is that even true? It is. I'm looking on Wikipedia. Wait, are you talking about the the movie with Madonna? Yep. Who the fuck That's was what he? They claim. I have no idea. He was probably just a voice, right? Oh, uh, he probably was. On, in his watch, right? Uh, probably. Let me see. They might uh, give a cast. All right, shot cam on. Look at this, Mark <laughs> Slade. I swear. <sighs> he played District Attorney John Fletcher. Yep, Dick Van Dyke. Oh fuck! I spilled. My wife is gonna hate me for that. Shit! I gotta clean that up later on. You spilled the ten dollar whiskey. I know. Oh. And the name of it is called South Shot. It is fucking <laughs> horrible. It is fucking horrible <laughs> stuff. Mm. Oh, shit. 
So that's uh, that's four in a row you have to do, right? No, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it is it your liver? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you had one anymore. Uh. <laughs> Hey, Jesse, why don't you tell everybody about your story that's in this anthology that I'm doing? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Do you remember? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh-uh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink some, I gotta wash this, this shit down with some water. Uh oh. Mm. Oh, oh, shit. That's the only way you stay semi functional. Ah, oh, shit. All right. Yuck. Well, I think I might need to change my story a little bit because I was a little confused about the submission call. I was like, write a creepy story, write a story about like a like a cult or something. So let me, I'll have to change it up. It doesn't really have any anything religious in it. So okay, I'll that's have to fine. Change it to like. A, but um, well, the name of the book is uh, "Aberrant Gospels: Fresh Fruit for Rotting Eyes and Delusions." Of psychotic prophets. You Man, know what? Let me, how much time do we have? Because I'm going to be able to write you a new story for that then. Got plenty of time. Okay. Then I have an idea already that involves very southern things like living in the sticks, meth, okay. and very crazy cults. And okay. some weird abortions happening and some weird feasting of flesh happening. Oh, yeah, okay. That's going to be crazy shit. Crazy shit. Well, <laughs> go for it. <clears throat> oh, go my it, goodness. Oh, fuck yeah. No. Up to 10,000 words. Up to totally t- different than mine. So, so the, wait, wait, the minimum's 10,000 10, or up to 10,000? Up to 10,000. Oh, okay. Shit. So, because your last story was 10,000 words. Yeah, I thought, I thought, see... I know. I was getting miscommunication. It, it, it's changed quite a bit. No, no, it wasn't miscommunication. I've I've changed a lot of stuff. Okay. Because if you remember, it started out as a Mad Magazine type of uh, anthology. So yeah, I kept like, getting <laughs> uh, some changes here and there. I was like, man, okay, I'm not really sure what I'm writing here. I uh, hope this <laughs> fits the bill. But it was uh, it's a story. What I sent you is a story about. Um, Pretty much, uh, uh, let's see, but two kids, like a like a girl, and a teenage girl, and a, and a boy, a, a younger boy, they go to spend sp- spend the weekend with their dad, and uh, he lives at this trailer park, and um, th- this weird shit starts happening, like like the the animals around are getting eaten up and devoured, whatever by some weird thing, this weird monster. Uh, they're not really sure what it is, but it left behind like this this leg or whatever. Well, well to them it didn't look like a leg; it just looked like some some branch. But as things progress, it's like, oh wait a second, this isn't just anything. This is obviously connected to who did this, and they find out that it's um. Well, it's kind of like a mesh between Stranger Things and uh, Kafka's. Uh, Metamorphosis. Ah. If, that, if that makes any sense. Hmm. Nothing so, wrong with that story. Yeah, <laughs> so it, it's it's a roach type creature. Oh, see, I just give away. See, man, I, I just. Okay, shush. <laughs> well, here but, are the writers that are in it uh, E.S. Wynn, Jason Norton, Tom Malafarina, P.J. Griffin, Andy Roush. Uh, you, Chris okay. Roy, Becky, your bone. So. Okay. And, me, and I'm in it as well. So. I think, yeah, let me write you another piece that has more religion in it. Is I, I think right. I could do something a lot better if, with that premise. Um, I would, I'd feel kind of bad for writing a piece that just kind of barely fits, fits the mark, especially when it's about like gospels of, uh, what was the title again? Aberrant Gospels. Yeah, I gotta meet that. All right, so it's, it's, it's got to be oddball 
you know, religions and cults and things. And, oh, yeah, um, and there's plenty of them here in the South. Oh, you, yeah. You know. uh, there's plenty of them all over the world. I, I just watched oh. that documentary about Scientology. Oh, oh we talked about that on your last show. We no, did. not the documentary. Not the documentary, but Scientology, yeah. That was a... Uh, people, Wait, 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 remind me again. Did we do that show on Halloween night? No, no, not Halloween night. It was somewhere around there. It was... Wait a second. It wasn't the same time last year, was it? Was that wearing a... Ho- uh, it's possible. Not uh, last year, wasn't it? Year before? Year before. Was it last year? Yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, because you were on talking about your uh, the Santa story. So it would be yes. like... Okay. So, but it wasn't, uh, let me see. I don't it was know. Krampus. It was the year before. It wasn't last year. It was the yeah. year before. Uh, times. Okay. Oh, shit. What was going on with this? <laughs> but as far as it being around October, it could have been. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Well, if we're talking about Krampus, it was probably going to be in, like, December. It would have to be December or January. At least that's when Krampus came out. In uh, 20, right. 2016. No, 2016. Wow. 2020. 20, uh, 2017. Uh, 2017 was what? Cthulhu Christmas. What? Oh. Wow, that much time has gone by? Holy hell, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is fucked Town up. Flat. Yeah, but here's the thing about doing time when you had a little bit of a few shots. It like feels like you're living in a fucking time warp. It's like, goddamn, holy hell! Let me get my mind to compute this. Okay, so let's talk about uh, strange corridors. Oh yeah, um, that's uh, it's a book that's illustrated by Cameron Hampton. Uh, did you like the? Uh, did I send you all the art or just the cover? Just the cover. Oh okay. I should send y'all the uh, some more of her art. Uh, she really did well on this. Uh, yeah, this this hopefully this book will be out too in 2019. Um, shoot, uh, it's about a little girl who lives in a uh, pretty much abusive home, uh, and this. Hate, uh, hate to interrupt, but another shot. Yeah. Another shot. It's okay. Keep Another going. shot. I was, I was just, I was just announcing that. God damn it. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be. Yeah. Uh, she. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. She, she lives in an abusive home, and this, uh, ah man, this, uh, this thing, this creature, uh, slash, um, clown, basically. Um, uh, he, um, uh comes into her home and uh, asks her if she'd like to go with him and he could uh, take her to her sister uh, her sister's home where's where she really wants to live and they end up in a, another dimension basically uh oh yeah by climbing through her uh, kitchen um, corridor so that's oh, where that wow. comes from and uh, they run across a hanged man. Uh, a they run across death. Yeah, so oh, wow. a lot of stuff. Uh, there's even a restaurant where uh, there's giant cockroach. Believe it or not, I did write a story about giant cockroach. <laughs> oh, my lord! <laughs> it's better than a giant spider because I'm terrified of them. Are you now? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. goddamn. Very much so. This is not a giant dick roach. God damn it, you could have just thrown that in there. Hey, Jesse, you know Dick Wolf has another TV show coming on. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Oh man. I think we need I'm gonna need a lot more water for this shit. Okay, here we go. You're gonna need a lot of something. Yeah. Got a I have some, some Tylenol. Uh, tylenol. I'll take it preemptively for the morning. Yeah, I have court in the morning. Oh, my Lord. You better make sure you brush your teeth good before you go anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> let's just say it to the judge. Burping. Yeah, you'll be burping in front of the judge. Yeah, yeah. So why do, you have, uh, why do you have court? 
What'd you do? Oh, well, he didn't do it. What, what am I? One of my midget baby mamas took me to court for some child support money. <laughs> Thanks to the midgets that he keeps in his basement. Uh, yeah. Apparently, I'm like, apparently she got out. She got out. She's living on her own now. I try to claim her as mine. Uh, last Wednesday, I didn't do a show because I was out. And I, my excuse was I was working for the globalists, trying to be like wrangling kids for the globalists. I don't know if you know about them, but Alex Jones is hinted that there's a crazy. Oh, really? Yeah, psychic vampires that feed off kids for the globalists Illuminati. And I, my wow, excuse that's... on Wednesday was I was out wrangling kids for them. But really what it was, I was out trying to find my baby mama midget so I can bring her back to her lovely abode. The cage that I made for her. These wow. pictures are amazing. This is the interior artwork. Yeah, that's the interior. Good job changing the wow. conversation, Becky. Good job. <laughs> That's okay. You can, Sorry. <laughs> how about now you talk about the pig people that live next door to you? Oh, that's okay. No? How about now? Wait a minute. Get... You have pig people that live next door? Well, I have not heard about this. Um, so last time I talked to Mark Slade, yeah, I had pig people that live next door? Nah. Um, I just, no. I just uh, told them uh, right there. Well, I'll be right back. I need to clean something up. One moment. Uh-oh. I pissed my pants. <laughs> you did not <laughs> shut <No>. up. <laughs> He's a mess. So this is interior artwork for that book. Yes, it is. Oh, yes. my gosh. They're beautiful. I know. And who who was the artist? Cameron Hampton. She, wow. she does a lot of art for me. And she also did the uh, cover for Witch for Hire. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, okay. Now, that's the one that you had showed me before, and I really like the cover for that. Yeah, yeah. I really she... do. These drawings are beautiful. Wow. Those are some that I would say, um, there's a couple of those that um, I would definitely hang on my wall. That's that's what I told her. Mm -hmm. Um She's she's won quite a few prizes, you know. Well, I can see why. Wow, I always love to look at the artwork and stuff on the you know that they that we have in books, the illustrations and stuff. But yes, we know some really really talented people. Yeah, that's true. Well, don't you make covers as well? I'm a, yes, I make covers, but um. I don't do, um, I don't draw. Oh, okay. What <laughs> <laughs> you design You them. don't, yeah, I d design them, yeah, I can do that. Um, but as far as drawing, um, I'm doing good to draw a circle. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a few talents, but that is definitely not one. I know some people that, you know. Are, are really good. Luke Spooner is a, is another one that is really really talented artist. Um, I've Niall heard his Park name. Niall Parkinson. Uh, you know him? Yeah, I do know him. Oh, yeah. he is really really good. I love his artwork. I think I uh, think I've used some of his artwork before uh, when I used to do a magazine, Nightmare Illustrated, for Horrified oh, yeah. Press. I bet you did. Yeah. He he also makes album covers. So. Oh, does he? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. He's a very very talented man. Very nice guy. So. Okay, so um, this um, an anthology of New York Switchblade. Yeah. Tell me about that. Uh, well, apparently, uh, it's turned out that it's uh, mostly stories set in Florida. 
even oh, though wow. my story isn't. My story's uh, that's actually the first appearance of my character, Barry London. Um, that story, I think, is actually set in Las Vegas or or in Nevada, and okay. uh, I just followed a headline. Remember the uh, remember the actress that was in oh what is that Superman show that used to come on the W. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Um, Shoot. What is that one called? But anyways, it was one of the actresses from that had had started a um, helped start a, a self-help cult. Smallville? Smallville. Smallville. It took me a minute. I think you, you, you remember this, the headline, right? Where, yes. And they were branding you know, yes. the women that were in it and stuff. So I just yes. used that in uh, the story. And um, the main oh. character had been in the cult. And she knew um, her family had had known um, Barry London's boss, who was a, uh, you know, a mafioso boss. And he sends Barry London to go help her to get out of this cult. So. Wow, that sounds good. I'd like to read that one, too. Thank you. Oh, definitely. Same here. Same here. Oh, Jap is in this. Jap Buckenstein? I don't know him. Huh. He's Dutch. Um, He is... (laughs) um, He wrote... When I first started working for Hellbound, they had just put out an anthology um, called Depraved Desires. Oh, okay. It was a dark erotica... And um, they asked me to read and review it. So I did. And the very last story in it is by Jap. And it was um, about knife play. And, you know, nobody got hurt or anything. But um, it was really good. I mean, it just absolutely blew my mind. I mean, the writing in it was just phenomenal. Knife and, um, play? You mean like so- knifing each other during sex? No, no, knife play, not oh. not knife fight. Okay, I just gotta make sure. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> right idea, wrong thing. Um, so when I when I wrote it up on my blog, I, I talked about that story, and he happened to see it. Now I don't know how he saw it, but he saw it, and he he messaged me, and we got to talking, and then. Um, uh, Hellbound decided to come out with um, a second one, and he said, "You like that story so much, why don't you write with me?" And I was like, "Oh no, 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 I'm not a writer." And he was like, "Yeah, but I've seen your poetry. You can write." And I'm like, "No." So he he finally talked me into it, at least trying it, and um, that is the very first published story that I had. Oh wow! So. And and it was he and I co-wrote it, and it's really good. Oh, that's great. So, yeah, he 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 created a monster. <laughs> 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 so that's been several years ago now, and well, here we are. And you can't stop writing now, can you? No. No, and and uh, I can't. I, I I've tried. I, Sworn I wasn't going to write any more poetry. I swear that every once in a while. And um, it just rolls around in my head until I just cannot stand myself and I have to write it down. So. <laughs> but I understand that um, that happens a lot with, you know, you guys when you're writing a story too. That the idea is there and it just burns a hole in your brain until you have to get it out. It does. That's true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. That's when the you know when the release is there, it's like you gotta you gotta strike it. You gotta you gotta do it. Right. Oh. A lot of times, a lot of times, that's all you think about. Yeah, Which, exactly. That's kind of part of the reason why I'm actually kind of requesting to write Mark another story is because I have a I have a visual image that's searing in my brain right now. Uh oh. Um, well, I have like this, this woman, this this meth head, and I, I, I'll more happens. 
It's. Have you been looking at my picture again? You know. You know. I told you about <laughs> that. Well, <laughs> um, strange corridors. Well, hopefully that'll come out from uh, Cactus Moon as the publisher. So okay. I, I just threw that out there so I wouldn't forget it again. In, <laughs> in strange corridors. I mean, it has a uh, like a lot of kids involved, right? Yes. Yes, it does. Yes. You know. She, you might strike it. I don't know if you caught Lucky or what, but I don't know if you're aware of like the Slender Man. Ah, uh, yeah, I know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, who's the Slender Man? Well, it's you, isn't it? Oh no! I ain't fucking me. I'm the fat man. What the fuck? <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Shit! Hell, my wife even told you me that. You are day. not, you dork. My wife told me that the other day. She was like, I was like, maybe I can go at the Slender Man. I mean, like, the fat ass man. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'll go, I go, I go at the fat oh, ass man. Oh, yeah. And you, have you told Mark what you have to dress up as for Halloween? Um, What I'm dressing as for Halloween in public is just. A Roseanne mask. Barr? Oh. <laughs> oh, that would just be. No. That would just be if I'm like wrong. totally drunk. You don't want me on a stream when I'm totally drunk. <laughs> Holy hell! If I get blacked out, you have no idea what I might say. I might be quoting right. my dad and some of his jokes. You don't do that. You don't do that. No, 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 no. No, no are, are, <laughs> so are you gonna you gonna go to the basement after taking Ambient and start <laughs> tweeting? Uh, no, but he's gonna go down in the basement dressed as a French maid, and his wife is gonna make him clean. Uh, With the midgets. <laughs> okay, it's a Wednesday night. If I wear a French maid outfit, I have to make sure my kids don't see that. Do you know how well, traumatizing? Well, maybe you can just wear it to work then. Oh no! Oh no! I'd be fired! Oh no! <laughs> There's no way. Well, you can just work for the podcast then. The kids will be in bed. Yeah, yeah, I work for, for the podcast. I'll do it here. But, but uh, pictures are yeah. didn't happen. Oh, it'll be oh. live streamed. The uh, okay, okay. The camera will be on. I mean, okay. I may or may not be wearing the mask, but it'll be it'll be me. You'll be wearing the mask if you have on the French maid outfit. Yeah, it will be. <laughs> what is this Leatherface mask? <laughs> no, it's a pumpkin. Oh shit! Oh. It's a it's a creepy. Holy hell! Pumpkin. I don't know if I could do this. We have an. Uh, it looks like we have another dick incoming in the chat. Hold on here. That really sounds bad, Jesse. <laughs> we have another dick incoming in the chat. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Shit! It hasn't it hasn't dropped yet. The dick hasn't dropped. Not yet. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> oh. F- God damn it. God damn it. Uh, I hate Infrared. to do this to y'all, but I'm going to have to get off of here. Oh, shit. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Mark, Mark, before you leave, what's your favorite yeah, horror movie? What is your favorite horror movie I and why? That. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. My favorite horror movie? Yes. Uh-huh. It changes all the time. Um, You know what? I'm going to go with The Tenant right now. Oh, really? Yeah, I haven't cool. seen it in so long, and I was thinking about that movie. The other day, I watched The Dark Half. Oh, yeah. And I hadn't watched that in a really long time. I think that's a really great uh, George Romero movie. It doesn't get mm-hmm. a lot of love. It definitely doesn't. But, right. Yep. And, of course, you know, you know there's the standards, you know, Rosemary's Baby and, uh, you know, anything to do with the devil. You know, The Devil's Bride. Actually, Texas I might Chainsaw go with... Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, yes. You know, I might go with The Devil's Bride as my favorite all-time movie of Christopher Lee. The Devil's uh-huh. Bride? I don't... Have you never seen that? Have You've I never seen, seen that? Oh, you need to see that. I don't think I've seen that. You also need to see Hereditary. Oh, yeah, I do. That's been overdue. I might have to, like, bootleg that or something. It's been way too long. Which, by the way, also in, any movie 
any horror movie, Ernest Borgnine is great, in my opinion. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've been wanting to see the uh, the new Halloween, but then again, I also read some reviews, watched some reviews, and it's like, oh, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't. It's like, what was the Well, you point? know what? Chris maybe. Miller said it was really good. If you listen to reviews, then, you know, you wouldn't watch any of those movies, to be honest. That's they true. always have mixed gonna, re- reviews. I'm going to watch so. it and give my own review on the show and let you know how I feel about it. I'm going to let you know how I feel about Becky. But, but you have to do it drunk. Oh, you're going to think I am drunk. Have you heard me rage? I can get angry. I can rage. And I sound uh, he fat. does. I've heard, and, and, I've heard and, you rage. And I have to, to make him calm down. Mark, you heard me rage and you still agree to come on the show? Man. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he only must... agreed to come on the show so he could listen to you and me, me laugh. No, I agree <sighs> because he was going to promote my bondage books. Yeah, that's right. Your your pirate your pirate. No, no, not that one. The uh, sex trafficking for dummies. That one. That's a masterpiece. I wanna, I wanna frame that on my wall behind me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm gonna he do. wants a signed. He wants a signed copy. Wait till everybody knows that you're the one that published it for me. Yeah, right. Published by Dead Man's Tome. Sex trafficking for dummies. <laughs> and the FBI is listening. Oh fuck! They might, they might be. I, I kid you not. When I was working on the conspiracy issue, this computer was having like random blue screen of deaths all the time, <laughs> and this creepy van was outside in the neighborhood. Oh jeez! And um, I got some strange emails from like the, I don't know, supposedly from the FBI. I know, I know, we all get those emails uh, from like Nigerian from princes, Nicholas. but this is, I think, it was legit. I, I think it Nick. was a scam. It probably they were was. Nicky. Like that. It probably was a scam. It probably was. Yeah. It was Nikki. They wanted you to send them three hundred dollars. They'd make it go <laughs> hey. away. That's all. Okay. One last question before you go. I know. I know, I know yeah. you have to go. Do you know who Nicholas Passion is? I do not. Who Thank is God. Okay. No, no. Okay. Don't even. That's no. okay. You don't need to know. That's okay. I think what is it a troll or something? Somebody uh, trolling you? He might. At this point, he's yeah, become kind of like much. a joke. I mean, he's um, not really a troll anymore. He's past his prime. Huh? I don't know. He's he's like really. You don't want to know. Okay, I'll put it put it to you this way. He's like a troll that had a heyday, but now he's kind of like Rocky past his prime. Like he's trying to come in. Back, right. he's trying to get back into the ring and fight some matches, but it's done. And the people that he's huh. talking about, I have no idea who the fuck he's talking about. He sends me emails uh, and messages every he day. Don't either. He on posts on the Dead Man's Tone Facebook page and different stuff. If you don't block him, and he <laughs> gets around the blocks, or whatever. I keep antagonist in those. Yeah, he he. <laughs> Goes on and on about people, about this or that. I'm just like, dude, I have no idea what you're talking about. And, and uh, nobody does. don't either. But do you encourage this guy to well, say these things? or I don't... Okay. I don't officially encourage it. I know that uh, sounds kind of dubious, you know. It sounds kind of fucked up, but... Um, I don't... I made a few episodes on at his expense, and they're probably I know that fuels him, but I don't I don't directly say hey no, no hold on when he first came to me and, and had all these accusations about a lot of people I give people their voice uh-huh. I'm like okay talk to me what are you saying so he was on your show one time no no he never came on oh, though okay. though I did invite him once and he would never come on he would say he can't he can't mm-hmm. come on I was like oh okay that's funny. Which, by the way, Becky, if he did agree to come on, it would be kind of like a, okay, well, you need to explain some things because everyone hates you. <laughs> and why is that? It would not be it would not be a Mr. Dead Man gets drunk show. It would be a Mr. Dead Man stays, stays focused and, and, and on point and, show. And, yeah. 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 
I can I kind of figured that. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I don't think that will ever happen. No. Right. Well, yeah. But uh, that would be a show to listen to, though. Yeah, it would be. It would be interesting. Uh, but it was great yeah, having I'll you. Yeah, I'll listen to it too. It, it's been <laughs> it's been great having you on here, Mark. Mark, thank you. Thanks Slide. for having me on. Slade, you're no you're, you're, you're no longer Mark Slade. You're Slade. You gotta have it. That's right. That's right. I'll That's give right. you your transcriptions um pretty soon too. I'm on. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. No thank problem. You. I've enjoyed it. You work too hard on stuff uh, that's not your own, I bet. Oh, she does. Becky's always working. (laughs) She's working hard. It keeps me out of trouble. (laughs) Kind of. Oh, I get it. You're that guy who's sending him (laughs) those emails, aren't you? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Don't tell. (laughs) Or is it you, Jesse? Are you the guy? Uh, (laughs) Jesse's the guy. I'm not the guy. I don't even send emails. What? Half the time, people were like, you haven't responded to my email, bro. I'm like, oh, shit, fuck it. <laughs> like, I sent a story to you like a week ago. I haven't had a response. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's my response. I like it. Oh. <laughs> I don't right. like it. Right. Why don't you like uh, it? That's when you say, I just don't like it. That's when you say it's, it's four to six weeks for submissions. Yeah. yeah. I should probably put that. And put you'll that hear from there. us. I should. I, I should probably put. Too, when I started, I should probably put. I have a full time job, and I have a family, yeah. and I have life. So I get to you when I get to you. Okay? And you're and you're drunk, right? And, and you're midgets. And I'm a drunk, and I have a sex ring of midgets that I pimp out on the regular for money. And, and you're who's a pain and you're blood. busy publishing my bondage books. Yeah, yes. and I'm publishing sex trafficking for dummies. Okay. There you go. Really, because you know me, I'm a rebel. I'm really trying to give it to... That's on Amazon, by the way. Uh, That's published on Amazon, right? No. I think you have to come to my house and get it. Into the basement. No, 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 no. No, that's Jesse's house. Oh, okay. He's got the copies. Yeah, yeah. Uh Oh, those copies. Okay. All right, guys. I gotta go. All right. You take it easy, Mark. You take it easy. Thanks, Mark. You too. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Man, well, that's been. (laughs) I guess it kind of wraps up the show, guys. And I'm a little, a little toasty. Gotta make sure drink this water. Get ready for court tomorrow because I have a custody hearing for um, some baby mama drama, some midgets. (laughs) You know me. I'm not an ableist. I'm not the ableist type of guy, okay? I make love to midgets. That's not something that an ableist does, right? I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. <laughs> I give them love and comfort. I care about them, you know? And then and then they run out and they call. They're like, well, I got knocked up. Not by me. You were on the pill when you were with me. I was wearing a rubber. God damn. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not mine. So that's my that's my defense in court tomorrow. I'll drunk it ain't mine. on this south shot. Let me get let me get the shot cam on the south shot. Look look how cheap this looks. Oh gosh. God damn, this probably looks horrible. South shot. Bourbon whiskey. Small batch. It was like ten dollars at like total total wines. God damn, it's horrible. But this monster <laughs> can. The show was sponsored by Monster. So <laughs> you think Monster? You think Dead Men's Tone Podcast? That's what you think. Yeah. <sighs> I'm probably you better need drink it. a whole lot of water. Oh, yeah, I'm going to need to. I'm going to need to. Fuck yeah. All right. Well, we're coming toward the ends here. I can barely even say that sentence. If you like the show, press that thumbs up. Share it to someone who likes to write, who likes to shoot the shit about things. We talked a lot. We talked about a lot of stuff, Becky. 
We did. did didn't we? Yeah. You know, and this show is kind of moving to a different direction. We kind of... Because we're on YouTube, we talk about a little bit of new stuff in the beginning that's kind of trending. We try to stay out of politics. I don't I don't want to get into that. I don't want to divide. Yeah, me neither. Though, we did talk about the Kentucky shooting, which brings up... it. It's like yeah, the next thing comes control. up is gun control. It's like, oh, goddamn. Fuck. Of course, I'm a southern boy, so it was like, oh, you can only... You can guess what my stance is on that. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just like, you can go ahead and lock up the psychos. Lock up the psychos, man. I don't I don't know what to tell you. But anyway. We talk about that, I'll talk about the the China 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 wants to launch a fake moon. This is like what is this? That's still the dumbest shit I've heard all day. Yeah. If that's not a plot to take over the world, I don't know what is. <laughs> that's like a Doctor Evil plot. It's something, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, they, they need an Austin. It reminds pa- me of Pink, Pinky and the Brain. <laughs> yeah, it, it does, right? Brain would come up with this this idea. We will launch. Mm-hmm. We will launch this luminous satellite into space, and Pinky would be like. I don't know. How did Pinky sound? He said all, all, all retarded. How did, how did I don't sound? think it'll work. <laughs> I don't think it'll work, Pinky. Or brain. Right. No. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> Fuck. It's a horrible idea. But yep. you know it's dubious. You know there's something with that. There's something with that. It has to be. Oh, yeah. It's a cover-up for something. Look Most over definitely. here while I do this. Oh, fuck, shit. Yeah, the chat's calling me out. I'm fucking drunk. Oh, <laughs> god damn it. Anyway, the show's at the wrap. Press the like button. Share around to someone else who likes to... Share around to someone who likes, I don't know, watching someone get drunk. Watching someone who likes to talk about the shit you want to talk about. I mean, that, that's, that's the aim of the show. Talk about horror, talk about writing, but also talk about the stuff that's happening on the everyday... Okay, I don't want to get into politics, but I definitely want to talk about the stuff that's happening on every day, because that—that's what this podcast is about. You know, it's about all that. Right. Anyway, y'all take it easy. Bye.